It was the one day a week I had with my son. No weekends, no school holidays, just one measly day. She felt that was enough. And the court agreed with her. I watched as she gave her evidence. The judge was hypnotised by those eyes. She could have said anything, I need to believe that. I know how he felt. At first, I had to pick him up, and she had to check I was in a fit enough condition to look after him for the day. That's all I got. One measly fucking day. So I'm walking down the path working out what I'm going to say. But I knew it was a waste of time, because whatever I said would be the wrong thing. And then I'd make it worse by doing something to annoy her. I always did. To tell you the truth, I look on it as one of my strengths. A skill passed on from generation to generation. Handed down from father to son. Yeah. If pissing off the ex was an Olympic sport, I'd get the gold medal every time. I was just about to ring the bell when the door opened. She had that look of disappointment on her face. You know the one. It's all in the eyes. You're late, was all she said. But the eyes said, Where have you been, you useless bag of shite? So I mustered up my best. It's not my fault, smile. And apologised using the old, I got sidetracked excuse. And asked if he was ready. No small talk. No polite inquiries about her health or general disposition. I just cut to the chase, focused on the job in hand, in and out before she could give me any grief. But I was wasting my time. It might have only been a weekly visit, but a week can be a long time, and a lot of frustration can build up. She wasn't going to miss out on the chance to vent some anger. He's been ready for over an hour, she said. I wanted to tell her an hour wasn't really that long. I mean, it wasn't like we had to be somewhere at any particular time. It was just a few hours, father and son time. Visitation rights, if you like. So another apology was quickly dispatched as I groped in my jacket pocket for my fags. Big mistake. It was another one of those, look into my eyes moments. She might have only said, do you have to? But the eyes said, I don't want that disgusting habit darkening my doorstep so you can put those away double quick, you pathetic waste of space. Another apology. As usual, I was on the back foot. Story of my life. So I put on my best smile, tempted to get back on track. Thought I'd take him bowling, I said. I'm just a fleeting moment. I think it was working. But then this tiny burp escaped and my cheerful smile must have turned into one of those inane grins making her instantly suspicious you haven't been drinking have you once again the eyes did what they do best and turned what might have sounded like a polite inquiry into a full blown accusation stick to the truth of thought don't go digging yourself a hole front it out I had a few last night I admitted and then I confidently threw in a good reason, which wasn't difficult, because it was the truth. Danny Carter's 30th. And I thought I'd got away with it. But she wasn't going to make it that easy. But not today. There it was again. The implication was clear. The eyes said, don't you dare lie to me, because if you've been lying to me... She was only a few yards away. I could easily have reached her from where I was standing. And the thought took shape in my mind. My hand round her throat as I asked what the fuck it had to do with her if I had had a few drinks with me mates. Where does she get the right to tell me when I can and I can't? Of course not, was all I said. She didn't believe me, but I didn't really care. This was my day with my lad, and there was nothing she could do to stop that. 
then something happened that completely threw me. Took me right off my guard to tell you the truth. It was the eyes again. Those eyes. Those beautiful eyes that could speak volumes without her ever having to open her lovely mouth. Took me back to another time. A better time. Then she handed me some leaflets she'd been holding. We need to talk, she said. Even though her mood had softened, I knew this wasn't good. Nice things stopped happening to me a long time ago, and I was used to that. Misery's my only partner these days, and I'd learned to live with it. So I knew there'd be a price to pay for this fleeting glimpse into the past. I looked into Rebecca's eyes those lovely eyes and I saw something I hadn't seen for a long time vulnerability I thought about asking what was troubling her but I was afraid she might just tell me Jason pulled me back from the brink where are we going dad? he shouted with his usual enthusiasm I kept my eyes on Rebecca as I told him I'd booked us a lane down at the Bolarama. As he rushed past me and headed for the car, I held a gaze. I'll have him back by seven, I said. And then I couldn't resist it. This was most probably the last chance I'd get to be on the front foot. For our little chat, I added, as sarcastically as I could. She still had that look of concern in her eyes, but there was no way I was going to let her say anything else. I just stuffed the leaflets in my jacket, turned and walked away. There was a spring in my step as I headed back to the car. I could hardly believe it. I'd actually got the last word in. A minor victory, if you like. Dry out now. Call us on. Alcohol addiction. We can help. Do you have a drink problem? I knew I'd have to pay the price at some point. That's the way it is. It's the way it always is. But for now, I think I'll just, just enjoy that moment. A day out with my lad. The final word in an argument. Things just don't get better than that. So here's to another measly day. Cheers.